Welcome everyone to the Clay Seminars. I'm Linda Sorman, and I'm joining you from NYU, which is located on the unceded land of the Muncie Lenape peoples. I ask you to join me in acknowledging the Muncie Lenape community, their elders both past and present, as well as future generations. New York University acknowledges that it was founded upon exclusions and erasures of many indigenous peoples, including those on whose land this institution is located. This acknowledgement demonstrates a commitment to beginning the process of working dis to dismantle the ongoing legacies of settler colonialism. And with me co-hosting today is Claire Toomey. Hello, um, I'm calling from London today. Um, the Clay Seminars is a collective gathering formed through the Alliance of NYU and the University of Westminster's research team at the Ceramics Research Center. We are grateful and humbled by the civic opportunity of our educational institutes to support this series. And we invite a broad gathering of artists, curators and arts organizations at all stages of their practice to join us and share in the seminar series. Hello everybody. Um, sorry about the glitches at the beginning there. Hopefully they'll have gone away from us now. Um, I want to welcome you to the third of the clay seminars whose theme is context and belonging um, i'm tess peters and i'm taking the role of facilitator today um, in today's seminar the three panelists will be offering perspectives on some of the issues that affect the current moment and the future ambitions of clay practices in their particular part of the world the theme of the seminar acknowledges the global history and associated cross-cultural nature of clay. Um, and of course, ceramic history, ceramic knowledge, technology influence has long had a global dynamic. Um, and as with the past, the different contexts we operate within today give rise to different demands of clay practice um, and on how clay skills and knowledge can have most impact on society on where clay is needed um, and where it can thrive as a medium uh, and still play a vital role. So each of the panelists <coughs> will be presenting their perspective in turn and we'll then have a panel discussion. Um, and after that, I'm going to be welcoming the audience to uh, pose their own questions. So if you do have a question, do please type it into the Q&A function. Um, so now I've got the huge pleasure of welcoming and introducing today's esteemed panelists. Um, is Nia with us? Yes, you are Nia, great, good to see you. Um, Nia Gutama is an artist, writer and educator. She's taught visual art at Telcom University Bandung. Um, she's a regular guest lecturer on the Women's Study course and the Methodology of Art Research course at the Institute Technology Bandung in West Java, Indonesia. Um, she works in a range of media, including ceramics, textiles, performance, uh, with a focus on the domestic sphere, um, both in terms of her feminist themes and the materials she employs. She's exhibited across Southeast Asia, in Indonesia, Thailand, Malaysia, and also in Taiwan, China, and Australia. We also have with us visual and performance artist, Nair Kuchaka. Hello, Nair. Nair lives on a farm in rural Maharashtra, but she's currently on a visit to London. Um, she's a graduate of the Royal College of Art, London, and the Faculty of Fine Arts, MSU Baroda, um, and was also a student at the Golden Bridge Pottery in Pondicherry. Nea is co-founder of Bij, a performing arts collective in Mumbai, and is a co-curator and working committee member of the Indian Ceramics Triennale. Um, our third panelist today is Dr. Samuel Naughty. Hello, Sam. Um, Sam is an artist and an associate professor in the Department of Industrial Arts Ceramics section at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Ghana. 
He holds a PhD in African art and culture. Sam's a member of NSICA, and he's been working on um, expanding the frontiers of ceramic production in Ghana. His current interest is working closely with indigenous women potters, both in traditional and contemporary spaces, and he's published widely on those issues. So welcome all, thank you so much for making it uh, here today. Um, so to kick off your, um, your presentations, Nia, can I ask you to go first and let us know about the situation in, in Indonesia? Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Kasa, uh, Ceramic Research Center, and, and Wallyu for including me in the today's seminar. And can I just start the presentation? Yes, please. Can okay. you share your screen? Okay. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, great, thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, my present, uh, presentation is titled in Play, We Live, and Unite. And I will start with the history, the history of uh, how the, when the Indonesian ceramics, uh, the high fire began. It, it was when there were Chinese immigrants came as the gold and tin miners of Singkawang, West Kalimantan around the first half of the 18th century, it's about 1740 and 1760. This is uh, yeah, just a photo of the immigrant, and this is actually, and this is in a modern, uh, this is present time, but we can see the Chinese influence of the ceramics. And when they came, when the, they came to Indonesia, actually they introduced the dragon kiln. So they fired the high firing ceramic in dragon kiln. So, the first dragon kiln actually found in West Kalimantan, in Singhawang. And then before their uh, coming, Indonesia clay tradition only knew earthenware. And at the East Indian of uh, Dutch colonizers from the early 20th century, the high fire ceramics then were introduced to other parts of Indonesia. This is uh, earthenware in uh, central Java, in Bayat, in uh, there is a village of Pagal Jurang. In, um, there is a slanting wheel, and mostly, usually women who did who do the uh, pottery, who do the wheel, who do the throwing, and men usually for the they uh, process the clay. And then this is the example of the their clay and their ceramic fire. The earthenware is black and color. Uh, because there is a leaf, special leaves they use specially for the coloring. For after fire, they use uh, leaves for fire, and so they, that's why the color is become black. And here in Claret in uh, West Java, you mostly men with hand wheel, and uh, this is the earthenware, uh, the red color. But unfortunately, in this village, um, the earthenware now is become. Uh, for the export need, uh, the earthenware is colored with the commercial paint, that's wall paint. <clears throat> uh, this is, we can see the slanting wheel from uh, Bayat village. <clears throat> the, the woman sit here and then this is the wheel and moved by the, this rope with the leg. And Indonesia modern ceramic art began in 1953 when the art school of the Institute of Technology Bandung opened its ceramic studio. Uh, since then, some of its alumni have been successful and productive as artists, photos, designers, and lecturers. This is the first example of the senior one, Mr. Widayanto. He's a ceramic sculptor who also produced handmade houseware with the help of many trained workers. So he has uh, many trained workers. This is, uh, he loves to explore the mythology, the Japanese mythology. And his, uh, his design is uh, inspired by nature. It's like butterfly. So it's really inspired by nature. Then there is 
This is Kandura, the younger generation. The four altruistic ceramics and designers founded Kandura. They research, design, and uses to produce handmade and limited edition of ceramic tableware. But they also hold a public workshop because, uh, yeah, they they design is very specific and exclusive, and uh, they survive from this. Uh, their production and also survive with the, with the workshop. Uh, this is artist, Albert Jonathan Stiawan. This is, I took him as an example because he's one of the success artists. Now, uh, Albert uh, resides in Japan as he gained a PhD in Japan. He loves to create repetitive pattern. We can see this is terracotta repetitive pattern. And he also creates drawing. But then he also uh, doing performance. This is uh, the ceramics, uh, the, inspired by mandala pattern and talk about temporality. So he crashed uh, the ceramics. And I myself as an artist, I gained my MFA in ITB. I love ex to explore women issues using ceramics, mixed media and performance. Uh, this is using paper clay, it's very thin paper clay, so I dip uh, the cloth of fabric into the clay uh, liquid and fire. <clears throat> this is uh, as time my performance, this is also my performance. And the newest one, yeah, aside from this alumni, there is Jatiwangi Art Factory a community-based creative organization in West Java. Uh, they live actually in the Rothschild industry, but they transform the Rothschild into musical instrument. And they do the colossal action since 2012. And yeah, it, in 2022, just uh, in 21st June, the two days ago, they performed at the Kumenta 15 in Germany. This is they do the colossal, since 2012 and always success. Um, this is, they do in Documenta. So they call participants and they did rehearsal before the D-Day. <clears throat> this is uh, in Documenta. Uh, yeah, actually they need more than, they said about 100 uh, participants uh, because of the, yeah, they have to, because it is the pandemic. Uh, even is lower, but uh, they said that race again, so that's why they had uh, limited the quota. So I think from my description, uh, there are strategies for ceramic artists and makers to survive the patient to survive the patient of handmade. As we all believe that they are still uh, appreciator of this work, and with the technological developments that help for issue of communication. In communication worldwide in the present and future. Uh, yeah, I'm surely potential for synergy and collaboration across the geographical boundary. Where clay is not totally tied to tradition, but conceptualized as an expanded practice tools. Yeah, for example, for its role. So I believe that the, the clay itself, without firing, they can perform as an art. Uh, yeah, the, and also perform uh, digitally. <clears throat> I think that's my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nia. That was a fascinating outline of what's clearly a very diverse clay scene in Indonesia, um, working on, on all kinds of um, levels and uh, engaging in all kinds of different ways. One thing I noticed from your presentation there was um, you mentioned that um, the ITB course started in 1963, which is actually quite interesting for me because the course that the CRC comes out of, the Harrow course, also started in 1963. So that's um, only ITB still going, of course. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, yes, thank you. We'll, we, we'll come back to some questions later, but um, can I ask you to, to go up next, Naya, and uh, let us know about your perspective as an artist and curator in India? Thank you. Yes, I have, um, I, I'm reading uh, also because I'm terrible at keeping time, uh, but, uh, my time on that. Um, so I have a few disclaimers. I would like to clarify that my presentation is not a survey. I hope to cover fair ground, but this is but a sliver of practices from a vast complex landscape of clay and ceramic cultures in the plural, cultures that have been in conversation for years and years and have informed each other and complemented each other. Oh, uh, yes, yet as everything in the subcontinent um, and as my presentation, um, they are not without their own chaos, conflicts and cliches, um, but it is a sliver of practices that is meaningful to me and that have shaped and bolstered my understanding of the possibilities of uh, the clay world. Um, second, all but one contemporary artists I show are good friends. Um, so this is a selection of practices uh, that suits my eco-feminist narrative. Um, I would like to acknowledge the absurdity of um, talking about identity in an increasingly globalized world. We are a multicultural people. Uh, I take knowledge and selves freely from many cultures I participate in. I'm certain I appropriate uh, knowledge. Do you know where the new headphones are? No, those are the only ones. No, Louisa, she bought some. Uh, I'll show you the black <coughs> chunky ones. Black chunky ones. I'm sorry, am I audible? Oops. Um, I think some, can you mute your um, microphone if you're not speaking, please? Sorry. I, uh, I, I'm certain I appropriate knowledge and selves from the different spaces I inhabit, different people I speak to, friends, family, teachers, even people I have never met, writers, strangers on the internet. So do I even have an authentic self, an untouched core that I'm able to point to as the origin of all my thought and action? Um, and lastly, there is the tr tremendous internal conflict about talking about identity and belonging in an increasingly polarized hyper-nationalist world that will colonize or cast off uh, at convenience. But here I go. Uh, I start with a legacy we can all claim. Some of the earliest clay figurines found on the subcontinent. Powerful images of what might be fertility goddesses. An acknowledgement of the power of a woman as creator. And here is another clay figurine from West Bengal, Kali, another wonderful feminist icon we have inherited. Talking about inheritance, uh, I go to a small town in South Goa that gives me my name. Um, I walk the town, learn about its mining history, talk to old relatives, learn about my grandparents moved to Bombay, visit the family house, meet family gods and trace family trees. On a bed of local clay, I document my findings. Rashi Jain embodies deep silences and channels her kundalini to find the sacred in herself. Anjani Khanna confronts our political realities, our rage, our compliance. A pile of stones, bones, rubble, flesh, deconstructed home, deconstructed human, and me attempting to draw lines around it and failing. Benita Persia's fragrance-induced figures are yet another confrontation with deep fractures in Indian society today. In the three short gorilla performances of Homeland, as much as I address notions of ownership and control and rootedness and uprootedness, I try to play with the materiality of clay. Madhvi Subramanian, who is currently based in Singapore of Indian origin, uh, talks about the history of indentured labor and the movement of bodies between India and the Far East. 
my preoccupation with the body and the clay body continues as I layer my two primary materials digitally, layers of skin, earth, history, knowledge, guilt, prejudice, myth, memory, power, and movement fossilized into a group of photographs. Ellery Alexander explores notions of mental health and care at the entrance of ceramic stream. I'm really sorry, I've lost my notes. Uh, and let's see, I have, sorry, uh, I've missed my cue. Uh, but this is a hand job. This is uh, a work of mine talking about, uh, talking about care and mediated uh, care. Um, Sherbani Das Gupta, who lives in, I'm sorry, I'm not doing this, something is going on. I don't know if you can see it moving forward or, sorry. Sherbani Das Gupta uh, talks about uh, borders and walls in her, uh, in her work, uh, crossing, looking both ways. Uh, she lives uh, at the border in uh, the USA. Um, and I continue photographic uh, documentation of, uh, of taking from the earth. Uh, again, questioning um, about the notion of potter as creator or as destroyer. Um, throughout India, we, we walk through uh, different ritualistic places and practices. Currently, um, currently in existence uh, and practices where earth is taken from, used for religious purposes, and that that goes back, it goes back right where it um, is taken from. Uh, gradually, practices are changing, and we are moving from uh, clay-based uh, things to uh, plaster of Paris-based things. Um, and sorry, these are very much um, living practices. Uh, and one of the reasons I've also included this photograph of traditional potters is um, they are pictures that I have taken. Um, and looking through the archives, making work with this, I also began to question my own gaze, um, especially in this context. Uh, I, have, I, I, I don't know anymore whether these are ethnographic photographs or not. Um, and, and therefore, um, as with everything else going on in the world, I live uh, with my guilt and hold my guilt and uh, live with the heaviness of uh, the moment. So that's it. Me, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, again, that was a, a great overview, I think, of, of your um, contemporary um, clay work and also in relation to the, the traditional work in India today. And I, I was interested in, in that question you, you raised about not really knowing which was ethnographic and um, and which wasn't because obviously you're working with um, you know kind of very sort of like individual and kind of like personal and political practice yourself too. Um, thank you. Let's move on to Sam now quickly. Um, Sam, can I? Uh, please invite you to give an idea of the issues you're currently focused on in, in Ghana. Oh, um, ha have I stopped oh. sharing my presentation? Tessa, oh, I yeah. something's going on with the computer and it's doing its own thing. Oh, sorry. Uh, can you help us, Siobhan? Um, sure, let me stop sharing on that. my end. Have I stopped sharing? Uh, you have now, yes. Thank you, you so much. Now. Okay, thank you. 
We have a glitch in the system today, I think. Sorry about that. Um, yes, go ahead, Sam, thank you. You have to un, you're muted, Sam, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Am I can now? Yeah, I Great. can hear you now, thank you. So thank you very much um, for the opportunity to, to join this conversation. Um, special thanks to University of Westminster and the New York University. Um, uh, I'm Samuel Norte, um, and I want to speak to the issue of the contest and belonging. Um, for Ghana, um, I, I want to focus my presentation on the indigenous practice, which has been the foundation for Ghanaian ceramic practice, actually, which I feel they've been marginalized uh, within the current practice. Um, everyone craves for acceptance and sense of belonging in Israel practice. Uh, acceptance is actually identified with an healthy relationship, but if I do something and people accept it, I am motivated to do more and I have begun to have a sense of belonging, and that's, that's what the theme is about. First, these traditional practices uh, provide very interesting examples of uh, traditional techniques, techniques which, if we don't take care, may be destined to disappear as industrialization proceeds. Uh, secondly, it presents an opportunity for government, especially where I come from, to develop the traditional uh, industry. So who are the makers of these traditions? Indigenously, they were women. Women are, please, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Yes, yeah, all right, yes. They are the makers of ceramics in Ghana. They work collaboratively. They, they do not work individually. They work collaboratively, although as different, different units, they work together in producing works that are used in domestic homes. They're used in serving their families and their entire community. As you can see on your screen, they use clay pigments to produce paints in paints in their homes. And these, these, these protect or pre preserve our cultural identity and heritage. Within our practice as well, they produce this domestic eth earthenware bowl, which we call apotoyua in, in, in Ghana. These apotoyua are used in serving uh, delicacies and in shredding veg vegetables. Then all of a sudden, boom, there was industrialization. Mass production came in, and as you can see on the slides, um, on the left, you see mass production ready to go into a kiln to be fired. Thousands of cars to be fired within a few hours. As against a woman who is producing closely to 60, 70, 80 everywhere bowls a day. Of course, these become the industrialized ones become cheaper and people are able to afford that one than the earthenware bowls. A clear example is that the unmade un ceramic bowls that they they produce to serve their families and the communities have been replaced by plastic bowls that are cheaper and easily available. We can go on and also talk about the same apotoria. You know, the blender coming in, shredding vegetables as against the apotoria, which was traditionally or indigenously used. So there is also this pot which we use in storing our grains and cereals. These pots are also used in storing water. Now, uh, these products have also been replaced by refrigerators and other plastic uh, bowls that uh, makes it difficult for these women producing uh, pots to try. Now, they there is also the practice of decorative pieces that we use in decorating our homes. Some, after doing the vase, they use painting techniques. Some also use incision. Some also use these ones, this 
support in decorating their homes. So what is my project here? My project here is looking at this traditional practice, which is becoming some sort of endangered. Because if you go into it, you realize that there are the, the, the limit, the age limit now is about 50 years. It means that the younger ones are not actually interested in going into this uh, indigenous practice, which if we don't, we are losing that cultural practice. I believe the way forward is the synergy between this traditional practice and academia. Being a professor of the university, I'm looking at how I can bridge these two or bring this synergy that there will be post fertilization and then pro protecting this traditional practice. So I've worked with these women, uh, as you can see on the image, I work with these women who produce everywhere bowls. We, we do design thinking how we can re-innovate these ideas, how we can use this craft in, an, in a contemporary installation. My idea is to make sure that these works can also be used as artwork and in so doing can uh, project the practice. Now, I, I, I just three months, as a university professor, I brought these traditional women to my university classroom as teachers. Then, as you can see on the, um, I wrote them as university teachers to teach my, my students. I believe that they have the skills. They've been practicing these skills for not less than 40 years. They have the skills to impact to these students. And when there is this synergy, there will be skills transferred. So you can see our students interacting with these uh, local uh, uh, practitioners. I also realized that after this synergy and collaboration, we, our students or artists are beginning to use their product in exhibitions. As we can see, these pores are made by these traditional women, using them in exhibitions. In exhibitions, somebody called it light, light soup, where Nicholas Burrow, relational aesthetics comes in, uh, trying to use the pores as something that will save mankind. I also use it in producing an installation that I call Building Bridges. I believe if you want to build bridges for the contemporary and then the traditional to have a collaboration, there must be a building bridges. And I was able to do this installation using only the works of these traditional parties. I believe by doing that, we bring them into the contemporary space. Whilst they are practicing their traditional ones, they, are, they also find a place in the contemporary contemporary space and then we keep moving from there this will you call this the contemporary ceramic art but actually it is a craft from the traditional space and these are some of the thinking i'm bringing into this synergy it's just i've just sown the seed and i'm hoping that it will germinate the need for cross broader fertilization of skills and knowledge is very key to sustenance and development of a practice such as ceramics there is more to learn from each other. Ghana ceramic art and curatorial practice can thrive better by identifying and developing such synergies. I see artists who will become more committed to their community, who will work in contest and have a sense of belonging if we do that. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Uh, also a very interesting um, set of ideas that that came out of your, your presentation there. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of like forming some questions in my mind, um, thinking about what you've just been, been saying, Sam, that sense of there are the um, indigenous uh, ceramic practices of the female, the women potters. Um, then there are the, um, the, the ceramic practices and products that come out of your department um, at the university. Um, what do you think is the degree of separation between those two areas? I mean, I'm thinking mainly in terms of um, do they uh, do the different potters work for different customers or communities? Um, do their their works ever get seen alongside one another or are they um, sold or made for different groups of people? Sorry. 
So I think you're muted, Sam. Yeah. yeah. They, the, they work in different groups, well, regionally, regionally, where, where so in, in one part of region, they work together, in another part of region, they work together. Uh, but they work mainly based on the, uh, as commercial artists. Uh, when people come to them that I need this product, because mostly their products are used domestically. Their products are used in their homes, and 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 it's been a quintessential product in the house of every Ghanaian. At least every Ghanaian has an Edinware bowl that is called Apotoria. But it's just that the influx of uh, mass products from Western and Asia and stuff have brought lesser demands to their to their work, which makes it. Uh, if there is less demand, it means that their practice goes down because if you do the work, uh, people do not actually uh, patronize it. And it makes that the present shoes and staff are not actually looking at that practice. It's becoming endangered because if you go there, you see the average age of uh, the, 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 the workers there could be close to 50 years. It means that in some years to come, as they, as they age and staff, this thing will become extinct and most of them are folded up one key thing is that the clay sites where we, we we collect our clay government have allowed buildings to be going on so they're not getting the materials you know what i mean residential buildings are being built on the clay site it means that getting access to materials is becoming a challenge and, and stuff like that so this is what i'm looking at how we could stop it we can only stop this if true exhibitions true collaborations and that's what i'm i've been looking at um okay. i've been working yeah that's what i'm looking at so yeah so you, you're about bringing bringing everyone together and not letting the uh, to see the, the essence so, yeah. yes yes please yeah um I mean, in Indonesia, Nia, is there a big divide between the traditional ceramic maker and the contemporary maker? Uh, yes. Uh, in actually, in Indonesia, yes, there is like uh, between tradition and contemporary. But now, um, the academician, the intellectuals, curators. Uh, we um, reunite the, between tradition and contemporary. So we uh, we try to lessen the dichotomy. So because mm -hmm. both traditions and contemporary art, they are both valuable and we have to appreciate. Uh, because the history from history is uh, from tradition. And, but now when there is a uh, schools, uh, at, uh, when we study at schools, then become it all conceptualized. So uh, mm -hmm. it's become contemporary. Whereas the contemporary art, is the concept is very important. So we can make the tradition and we can conceptualize the tradition into contemporary. So we we lessen the, the gap. I think, uh, yeah. What we already did for, we already have the fifth Indonesia Contemporary Ceramics Biennale when, when we met in Jatiwangi. Uh, it's that our effort to unite the tradition and contemporary. And so uh, also like the what Jatiwangi, uh, they made roof tiles. Roof tiles is tradition actually, uh, it's terracotta, but we bring it like a contemporary because it's conceptual. Also, some artists, they also respond the clay tradition uh, uh, into contemporary. They make, sometimes they, uh, they use the tradition part into contemporary. Uh, I took an example of the, uh, I don't have the video here. Uh, there's artist, Edwin Pradita. He used pot, he took pot, uh, it's a traditional pot, and he uh, uh, make it like a digital. He inspired by Ai Weiwei, the, the artist Ai Weiwei. Uh, so he started after Ai Weiwei. So the pot become 
the screen. So the, the color of the glaze like melted. So it's to combine the tradition and contemporary. I think, yeah, if our ceramics, we treat the ceramics uh, between tradition and contemporary, if we can go together, we can collaborate. Thank you. Um, Nea, <laughs> a, a similar question to you about that, um, you know, the division between tradition and, and contemporary. Is it something which is very separate or are you in, is it, is there an interest to bring them together? This is a very, uh, this is a complex, uh, complex question. Uh, uh, I mean, first of all, like all of the traditional practices, I do think are also um, contemporary in that they are not, uh, it's not, they're not uh, philosophically or, um, I mean, it, they're not dead. These are mm -hmm. living practices. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I mean, when I, I do think they are contemporary practices. At the same time, I think um, in, in India, I mean, they, they have been quite, separate also because it it is it's not uh, it, it is something that is passed down sort of uh, through family lineage uh, and there are issues of caste and class and other societal ish things to think about um I mean, it's certainly as somebody who works in the contemporary, as a contemporary practitioner, they are they're they're relevant. They're not they're relevant today, uh, and, and therefore, I mean that that is also the need to share it. We are referencing them. We are interested in them. I think, and I speak for most practitioners. Um, at the same time, I think this is something that I mean, I, 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 as as like the Triannale team as well, we talk about is when like bringing these practices into the gallery space, how much of it is something that is enforced or directed by you as an outsider, um, you know, and how much is, is that some, is that a direction that these practitioners want to take? Because when you look, if you, if if you see those images of the terracotta horses or uh, you know all of the offerings that are made or uh, they, they are ritualistic spaces they are living uh, temples and shrines uh, and bringing them into the gallery it, they, are, they, they won't they will be in and they could be installations outside but they are not they are sort of uh, living uh, cultural traditions uh, that have some meaning to to their practitioners, and so I mean, so I think this remains a bit of a in in so many ways uh, we we are all working and living and breathing the same material, and we understand the same material. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, philosophically speaking, uh, they are very different cultural practices. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, I'm just aware that time is whizzing away with us as ever. Um, Phoebe or Claire, are there any are there any questions you'd like to bring in at this point? Hi, Tessa, and hi. Thank you, everyone, for the presentations. Um, there's been um, a couple of questions and maybe there's yeah there's lots of things I've been thinking about as well um, and uh, yeah I'm wondering if this one perhaps you've kind of already answered in some ways but um, yeah to do with communities and how they feel about your work and maybe that's something to answer more in a personal way um, kind of if you've feel like they're supporting the work you do or uh, separated? And I guess that's quite a different question uh, depending on how you're working, but I suppose um, individually maybe, you know, do you, you know, as artists, I guess you're working in what we might consider non-traditional ways and to what I think would be interesting to speak a little bit maybe about, you know, to what extent is that, um, accepted and there's kind of possibilities that support you in that path or you know is that something still very challenging 
to kind of continue to make the kind of works that you're making and um, obviously people have touched on examples I think um, of lots of different kinds of practice in uh, the area they are but maybe if yeah maybe individually if kind of you had any thoughts around that Are you, how do you feel you're being kind of supported in, in the work you want to do? Um, uh, Nair, do you want to start off on that? Is the um, ICT an important network I mean, for you? Like, yeah, you've kind of almost made your own support system. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think uh, in so many, uh, one, uh, it, it, there, 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 there were a lot of interesting and exciting practices happening across uh, the medium uh, in India, and the ICD was um, happened obviously because there was a need to bring those together on a plat on a platform that uh, that that allowed for that conversation. And uh, so, uh, but I mean, the thing is that also in India, you have we were able to in so many ways create our own opportunities. And I think as um, we have, there is a lot, I mean, there is a sense of community and there is tremendous support from the community for, uh, for, uh, for the ambitions uh, that you have. I mean, all of us on the curatorial committee of uh, the Triennale, we're um, all practicing artists ourselves. Uh, and uh, when when we decided that we wanted to take on something that big, it, we did not have the support of uh, the artistic community across the country. I don't think that would be possible really. So, so certainly, I mean, communi uh, community and building community um, and supporting each other, I think definitely are a big part uh, of uh, of understanding the the material even I think. Okay, thanks. Um, is that a question you could address, Sam? The idea of you know how do the communities feel about your work? Uh, when I started, I I I realized the enthusiasm from the traditional porters, right? The the the. They, they now have a sense of satisfaction. They have a sense of uh, belonging to borrow your, uh, your theme um, because uh, they, they remark that they, they have never in their lifestyle of practicing for 40 years been invited by a university to come to a university. They have never been to school. Don't get me. They've never been to school. So the opportunity to come and interact with university students is, is really a great one for them. So that is that is a starting point. From the university, I do not have too much support. It appears, well, let's see what you can do with this thing. I'm sure because it's just a seed that has been, uh, it's been sown. When it germinates and uh, people will come on board. But for now, it's just a, a personal um, project and uh, no funding. I found it, I found it myself. I make sure that I visit them. There's a cross culture. I'm going back to look at their kiln to see if I can uh, uh, improve their kiln for them. So the there is there is excitement at the end of the traditional protest, but I also see excitement and satisfaction on the part of my students because they are very happy trying to integrate with this traditional protest. So that is for me no support but there's excitement within the community and i'm sure as time goes on the community will buy into it and then things will be much better okay thank you um nia is that a question you feel you can address um the idea of you know how do the the, the, the audiences the uh, community communities feel about the work about ceramic work being produced yeah, I think um, in my country, uh, yeah, like I said, we've been between the tradition and uh, the, the modern contemporary. Now we can uh, join together with collaborate. 
uh, we learn from the tradition. So students uh, sometimes uh, lecturer bring students to the village to learn uh, from the doctors. And, and, and then the lecturers together with the students uh, like help them to uh, develop the design just to introduce how to create the new design for, for their uh, portrait because they, uh, they, they focus on how to make the, the part, the, the cups, but uh, uh, we help them to develop the design. Uh, but we are not really intervened. We really, um, based on their tradition, and we just develop. So we don't intervene and they, they, we don't change their, their style. Based on their style, we, we develop. So I think we learn each other and our community, uh, yeah, what community? I think we, we don't have such a community. We have uh, all ceramic artists have their own studio, What? but we unite together, we learn from each other. And sometimes we celebrate with a huge ex exhibition. Um, yeah, I think uh, that's the condition in, in Indonesia. And also, I th um, in my experience, uh, to add to that of the um, uh, the ceramics biennial in Indonesia, um, it is very varied. There's lots of different kinds of works which which feed into that, like the Indian ceramics biennial. Yeah, it, they're very kind of broad based. Um, exhibitions, they, they, they do bring everything in. Uh, any other questions there, Phoebe? Yeah, I'm trying to think what we uh, haven't covered already, I guess. Um, I mean, there's some thinking about, I guess, traditions and what what is needed by, I guess, now and the future. Um, and I think it was interesting, uh, you know, Neha, you touched a bit on this in your talk as well about how, you know, our, our lives aren't so narrow and, you know, we're kind of picking up on all kinds of traditions in different places. And um, for me also, I think I was thinking about the, this connection to the raw material, which seemed, um, you know, in your work, you're kind of very physically directly connecting with the land at times. Um, Sam, in some of what you spoke about, the maybe the difficulty in actually kind of accessing that sort of raw clay and land sometimes, and and also thinking maybe with um, you know near in Indonesia, particularly with the ceramic uh, music festival, you know this kind of tradition of ceramic objects and kind of really being exposed to those in a very different way than just as them as roof tiles but kind of this other experience so i don't know if there's something maybe to do with you know that physical connection to place and material that we if anyone had anything to sort of say i realize we're quickly running out of minutes but um yeah <laughs> uh, is there anything for me yes yes uh, yeah um yeah like uh, in yeah, like Jati Wangi F3 is actually, um, they feel that uh, first, when it's the village, the industry village, very industrial, and they think decoratively how to keep uh, the clay as more valuable than industry, like the past industry. So they they create that uh, that creative action, not only the roof tiles, roof tiles is for only for one example, by the invite artists, educators, practitioners to work a Jaguani together with the villagers in the roof tile to make something, to create something. Um, so that's how they, uh, they make the use of of, of the, the the object, they still keep the tradition. They still use the roof tiles uh, and the, uh, but, uh, but to make, but to 
remind the people, remind the village that the, the earth, the soil, the clay, uh, we have to appreciate the clay. So that's how they create the creative action. Yeah, actually, actually, that's what the um, the aim, the purpose. Yep. answering the question yeah no it does i mean it seems to me that a, a big strand that's running through um everything that everyone's raised today is that idea of um finding ways of valuing the the clay and the skills and you know so in the case of the roof tiles at jatawangi um you know how how can everyone value those more? Um, and in a way, you know, Jatawangi are known for their, their music as well. So bringing them into that musical performance is, is yet another kind of quite imaginative way of doing that. Um, uh, you know, Nea, you were saying that, you know, the idea of um, the tradition, you know, isn't something in the past, it's something which is, which still exists very much now in the present. It's another form of, of the contemporary. Um, and, you know, that needs to be valued as well because it's another way of using clay. It's another way that it contributes to um, society. Um, and Sam was saying something kind of like very similar in, in the way that he was bringing the uh, women potters into the university to teach the students um, as a way of showing how much their skills are valued um, and how, you know, um, they have something to kind of like pass on and, and uh, yeah, kind of give to the culture as well to keep, to keep everything alive um, so that we don't want to lose any of those things really, I think. Um, and I would say, we have the same response in the UK, exactly. You know, one's always worried about um, what one's in danger of losing as much as one wants to expand the field of production. So even though we might be kind of like moving into, into other ways of using clay and other places where, where clay is shown, we want to keep keep everything really rather than, than, than losing things as well. Um, I suppose in a way that's a bit of my summing up. I don't know if there's anything any of you would like to add to, to that or if, I, if you feel I've kind of misinterpreted anything or missed anything there. Um, I mean, otherwise, um, I'm happy to remind people that there is another seminar tomorrow. Um, the seminar tomorrow is on the theme of what is the artwork, uh, which you've got on the screen there now. Um, and that's going to start at four o'clock uh, in London time and 11 a.m. New York um, EST time. Um, so I hope that everyone can come along to that tomorrow. Um, thank you. Thank you to all the speakers. And um, yeah, let's, let's try and catch up with more conversations about that soon. Thank, thank you. you to all the panelists. Thank you so much. We've And thank you to the audience for sticking with us today. We had some really rocky moments with Zoom and thank you for sticking with us. We'd like to invite the panelists to join us on a second Zoom meeting, a different one than this. Uh, the invite has been sent to you so we can celebrate um, what we have discussed today and, and just have a bit of time together. For the audience, if you have a moment before you leave, uh, we had a glitch where everyone's name is Claire Toomey and we'd love to know who was here today so we can continue to be in touch with you and to share this recording with you today. So if you wouldn't mind going into the Q&A and just drop your name into the Q&A, then we'll be able to screenshot that and keep in touch for the future. So I'll stay on as uh, the panelists maybe join the next Zoom and I'll join you in a few moments. But thank you, Tessa Peters and everyone today, uh, Phoebe Cummings and all of our amazing speakers. Thank you for joining us. And we look forward to continuing the conversation. Thanks, Linda. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Bye.
Thanks. Thanks. Next meeting. Next. Timia. Great.